Here's the Komodo M1100 front tire. What we recommend doing is using a T25 torque, remove the rotor, gets in the way. We usually replace them here in the store. Not everybody's going to. It makes it easier for what you need to do next. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the air out of the tire. Okay. So this tire also has armadillos in it, I'm pretty sure. So it might be a little messy, but it really depends. So we recommend getting tire iron, tire levers that they use for motorcycles. You're also gonna need some zip ties too. That's the trick to getting this on. So what you need to do first is break the bead. See how I just broke the bead? I kind of go around and I do that to the entire tire. All right, one side and I try to break the bead on the other side because that way it allow you to get it off. All right, so next step, put the tire lever under, push like this. All right, now we get a second tire lever, put it like this. All right, so you can see how it popped up and then you just kind of keep working it around. You can see it can be kind of tricky. It's not even getting out of the bead. So sometimes, like I said, well, I have to go reverse here for a sec. So you can see it can be kind of tricky. So there's that. So what I like to do is take the tire lever, pull like that, loosen it, put it under. Because once you get it, chunk off like that there you go and then it'll come off pretty easy see all right yeah, and like I said this one had armadillos in it so you can see how it is it can be a little messy so next step here so I take the tire lever and I just pull the tire over the rim you can see the armadillos there and the mess it made let's clean up this mess real quick that's just the armadillos being there over a year plus So, if you do have armadillos in there, I recommend just cleaning it out a little. It doesn't matter too much, because the polymers don't mess up too much. I'm just using a little bit of rubbing alcohol, just to loosen up some stuff. Make sure nothing's on the rim edge, you know. So, because a little bit will be in there, the paint and the corrosion sometimes, but it's nothing to worry about. It's all aluminum. The polymers never wreck anything. I've had this in rims for years. All right, so now we have that tire out of the way, that mess from the armadillos. You can see here I'm still kind of cleaning it up. But it's not as bad as normal tire slime. All right, so tire is directional. You can see how it's got like pointing towards, that's where it goes towards the front, spinning like so. So you always want to make sure when you're doing it, it's properly. So let's say here's the scooter and it's pointing towards you and you're standing on the scooter right now. The rotor is on your left hand side. So that's how you want to put the tire on. So that's what we're going to do. So first things first, this is easy. Pushing around the rim, you got it on. This is when the zip ties come into play. So you have to put a zip tie through. I actually like to go to the back side. It's easier sometimes. All right. And then we're gonna crunch the tire. Smash it up. See how I did that? That's so the little concave, when we're putting the tire on, it'll go around the rim properly. Otherwise it will not. And you'll be sitting there swearing for hours. This is the trick, zip ties. So, there's still a little bit of technique to it, but this is the trick. So we go like so. Um, I try to do at least three, four minimum, spread them out. Sometimes zip ties will snap from how much pressure you put on the tire, Boom, how much strength we're about to endure on it. All right, so that's where we're at. All right, the concept is, is the tire is gonna sit and sink inside there with the zip ties. So put our foot here, put the first tire iron, see how it kind of slapped around there, that's the trick. All right, 
and then just got to keep working with the tire irons. See, that was the zip tie snapping that I was just like talking about before. So, and then you got to work your way around. See, I'm working. And you got to be careful because, like I said, it can be pretty evil on this. And look, I'm snapping zip ties. This is, this is good to show you because it's failing right now. So you can kind of see what happens when things don't go right. So you can see here how I kind of failed. You know, my zip ties didn't work out. Probably because I didn't use enough of them. So we're gonna have to use more zip ties. We're just gonna retry again. This happens more frequently than you realize. It's better to kind of space them out more. Probably had them too close. Because the concept is, is we're crushing this tire so that it can fit inside the rim tighter. So then that way we can push the tire over the rim. So it was good I failed. Kind of shows you what happens when things don't go go the right way. Like I said, you can see here how I'm smashing the tire, basically trying to make it concaved or curved, basically. You know, another thing too is maybe I didn't have them tight enough. The tighter they are. Sometimes better your luck is. All right, because we're trying to get this rim placed into there. You see how I did a better job now of zip tying by spreading the zip ties? So that's what you want to do more like that. Hopefully this works out this time. So you have to be kind of careful. See how like pop back out? You have to kind of be careful the tire irons as you work your way around. All right, so now you can see we're getting close to making it fit. And that's see how this is like concaved in here, like pressed up against the rim. And that's the trick. So then we just kind of loosen this a little, you know, pop another tire iron underneath there. And then pop it. So I'll make it look a lot easier than it can be done. Um, it is very difficult to do it. I'm not even gonna exaggerate on any level. There's a lot of times where I'm extremely frustrated doing it. And I don't know what to do. So those are all the big things that come into play when you're working on these things. It's kind of a misery sometimes. Be careful not to damage the tire. I like to use bolt cutters. It usually doesn't damage anything. All right, next check. You have to pull the zip ties out. All right, now you see how it's kind of concaved here? You have to take your tire lever and you're gonna have to pop this bead up because if you don't, it's not gonna seal. But you don't wanna do too much because then you'll pull too much to the other side. So you have to kind of find that sweet, happy spot. And that's where it gets difficult. So you have to make sure you do it both sides. See how this is really tight? You can see here how tight that is. You, and then you can see how here it's all better. That's the downside when you're doing the zip tie thing to get it on. You have to do that. So next step here is I'm kind of just pulling up the tire some, getting around the bead. Hopefully this up here, this bead's good enough yet. Take air compressor, usually hundred PSI or more helps. You can see how it's leaking. So you can see it's still leaking up over here on this top spot. So then what we have to do then is pull up the bead. Still getting a leak. So this is where it gets tricky. You know, so once you kind of, you know, so this is where, so I'm just trying to replace the bead here the best I can around it. So that way it doesn't leak air until eventually the bead pops. Good thing I like to do sometimes is like this. I'm still losing air in that spot. So you can see here why we're losing it. So I'm gonna try to pop that up. Hope that works. And you can see how it just popped. See how the bead popped on? 
but higher air PSI helps. You can see now the beads popped on, but the higher PSI, if you would have done that, it's much more beneficial to you because it'll help you. Um, watch out for these little rubber things here too. I used to try to peel them all off, but if you have one sitting in the rim, it will cause the rim to leak air slowly. So kind of watch that kind of stuff. But that's how you install the front tire. You know, zip ties. And then like I said, air compressor, 100 PSI or more, that's the trick. But you have to line up the bead a little bit. As you can see, it was leaking air. And then once you're good, you're all set then.